Imagine choosing Daniel Jones over Saquon Barkley. You've got to be crazy. Dallas still stinks. Yo, my dude, Kick Dick Bat here. Imagine being a Giant fan and having to go listen to Hard Knocks yesterday and listen to your GM talk about why you don't want Saquon Barkley, but you want Daniel Jones, one of the stinkiest quarterbacks in the National Football League. Oh my gosh, the Giants stink! And it is going to be a wonderful, wonderful season watching them suffer. Thank you for giving us 98% of your offense now before we get into it i just want to say to each and every one of you guys out there happy fourth of july i hope you guys have a great wonderful day i hope you're able to enjoy yourself i'm just going to be hanging around uh probably grilling and stuff around my home it's like we're, we're in the midst of some heat wave so it's like 112 degrees i ain't kidding 112 degrees out today uh you it's ridiculous so you can't even stay out there but uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful fourth. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's getting closer and closer to training camp, especially once we get through the 4th of July. It, it starts to really uh, speed up. So hopefully training camp will be here soon. Now, as many of you guys have seen, uh, the, the I guess HBO did hard knocks, uh, they're getting ready to do it for the season uh, coming in training camp, uh, but they're doing like a a like a like a off season one, which is pretty interesting, and I actually really enjoy this because I like seeing how the GM is wants to construct his roster and everything that they're going through, and because it's the Giants, one of the big segments is about. What they're going to do with Saquon Barkley. How are they going to handle Saquon Barkley? Or are they going to keep him, resign him, let him go? And it was quite amazing watching uh, the Giants GM, Joe Schoen, uh, talk about Saquon Barkley. First of all, the guy thinks uh, nobody is going to pay Barkley that much money. Like, he didn't think Barkley was going to get that much money. He mentioned maybe something with Detroit, maybe something with the Eagles. Uh, but uh, he doesn't really think... He's going to get that much. And he acts like Barkley's like 32 years old. You know, he's acting like maybe and I, like 34, 35. Like, well, yeah, he might have a few good years left. There was one part in the show where he's talking to Frank Gore. And he's actually trying to convince Frank Gore that uh, being 27-year-old running back is old. We're talking about Frank Gore here. Frank Gore got better as he got older. Uh, he was good in his 30s. It was really ridiculous hearing it. And to me, my, my favorite part of the whole thing was when um, Joe Schoen is talking, uh, you know, about Barkley and he's talking to his staff about Barkley and why they're going to let him go and, and, you know, what they think about Daniel Jones. Um here, here's what they said, right? Pound Giants executive Tim McDonald on possibly losing Saquon Barkley. We lose Saquon, what's our identity going to be? He talks about how they're going to lose their explosiveness, how they're going to uh, really uh, lose their touchdowns, and what are they going to do? And this is the Joe Schoen's response, right? This was what got me. I, I, I couldn't believe he said this, but this is what Joe Schoen said. We've got to upgrade the offensive line, and you're paying Daniel Jones $40 million. It's not to hand off the ball to a $12 million back. So because they're paying Daniel Jones $40 million, they don't want him handing off to a $12 million back. And then what's really funny about the whole thing about the Giants is they did nothing to, to, to upgrade their offensive line. He talked about upgrading the offensive line. They didn't upgrade it. They didn't upgrade it. It's absolutely ridiculous. It was very interesting, and I can't wait to see how it's going to play out and what more is going to happen. But uh, clearly, I think some of the staff guys looked at, at, at Joe Schoen as like, uh, what are you doing? What, what are we doing here? At one point, Schoen even said that even if they had Patrick Mahomes, 
they couldn't win with the uh, you know the offensive line that Daniel Jones had. Let me tell you, Patrick Mahomes came in, they would be a lot better. Daniel Jones stinks, and there was a whole segment on them looking at Daniel Jones and talking about his recovery. He looks like he looks like a deer in headlight. Uh, he he looks scared already. Uh, it, it's not good for the Giants. Um, but it, it, it was interesting because they really like. I can't say they they, like they disrespected uh, Barkley. I don't think it was like flat out disrespect, but but they really soured on him, and they were really like, "Eh, yeah, would you just kind of shoo shoo him away, kind of thing, you know? Uh, And and really, you're like, oh man, Barkley's got to. He came to Philly. I want him to go off this year. I want him to crush it. He really deserves it. Uh, It was not just me feeling like that. A lot of Eagle fans, even Eagle players thought that. Uh, uh, Eagle star not happy about how Giants treated Saquon Barkley. The video fired me up. And A.J. Brown, uh, that was him that they're talking about. Here's what A.J. Brown said. The Saquon video fired me up, and it wasn't even about me. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you get yours, fam, at Saquon. So he's even... Like being, you know, it's even firing up Eagle players. Like, man, nah, you, we're gonna show you how good Saquon Barkley is. Uh, you just don't shoo shoo him away, and that's kind of what it seemed like. It was, it was kind of crazy. Very, very interesting show. Um, I actually really like the whole off season, um, the whole off season element they're putting into it, where you're getting behind the scenes, and you can see how, how like, uh, you know. The Burns trade is going to start to uh, work itself out, um, and and things like that. But uh, I I'll, I'll I'll be uh, you know we'll talk about more when they talk about more Barkley stuff uh, in the next episodes. But so far it, it was really interesting, and and I think the Giants made a huge mistake in in how they treated Barkley and let him go. Uh, that that's just my opinion. And now Barkley's in in the division, and they and they got to face him twice a year. That's a that's a big deal. That's a big, big deal for the Giants. I, like I said before, I, I think Barkley is going to have a monster year. I think he's going to have one of his better years. And I think he's going to be used a lot more than people think uh, that, that the Eagles are going to use him. I think he's going to be used a lot. Now, I don't think they'll use him like Swift. I don't think they'll use him like Miles. I think he'll get much more activity. And I think he's going to get a lot in the passing game. But I am excited about Saquon Barkley. He has never played with a good offensive line, a good quarterback. Only his rookie year was the only year they had a 1,000-yard receiver. I don't even think they had anybody over 800 yards receiving except for his rookie year. So he's really never had any, any offense around him. And like I said, you watch Saquon Barkley, okay? You, the first couple games, you got to give him a break because he's going to be getting handoffs, and 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 that line's going to part the Red Seas, and he's going to be huge whole lanes to run right up in, and he ain't going to know where to go. He ain't going to be able to believe. He ain't going to be believing his own eyes. He's going to be getting ready to run up all up in it. Pause. No diddy. And he's not going to know what to do. He's going to he's going to stutter for a second. Barkley's used to getting a handoff, having to make an initial move. And then running, he he ain't gonna ever. He's he hasn't had this since college, where where the line just parts the Red Sea and there's a giant hole, go up in it. You know what I mean? Pause. No diddy. That's what he's gonna have to do. So we gotta let him adjust because it's gonna take a while. But Barkley has a monster year. I'm gonna go out on the line here and say this. Here's my hot take. Week one versus the Green Bay Packers. Saquon Barkley goes for a buck sixty-five. 165 yards in his debut as an Eagle in Brazil. Bank it. Book it. Write it down. It's going to happen. Now, my concern for the Eagles is not Saquon Barkley. Barkley's going to be fine. What I what I like to see is who's going to back up Barkley. Because I think the jump is great behind Barkley and then the next guy, which I guess at this point is Gainwell. I think there's a real big drop-off. Uh, So it's going to be interesting to see if the Eagles feel the need to go out and get another running back. And if they don't get another running back, uh, one guy I'm going to tell you we got to watch out for. And I haven't talked about him. I've been meaning to talk about him for a few weeks. But it just I always get distracted with something else. But being that it's the 4th of July, I want to make sure I get this out. Watch out for undrafted free agent rookie Kendall Milton. 
Kendall Milton, when I watch him and I watch his tape, I, I in some ways I'm like, oh, this kid's making a team. He's got size. Uh, though he ran, I think he ran a 4.62 at the combine. Uh, he looks a lot faster tape, okay? His game tape looks a lot faster than it was 40 time, but uh, it, it maybe took him out of, of being drafted. He's 6'1 one and a half, 225 pounds uh, from Georgia, okay? Watch out for this kid because this kid is going to go out there and I think he's going to make a huge, huge, uh, I think he's going to make a huge impact on the Eagles. Think about it like this. You probably figure the Eagles keep four running backs, right? You're going to have Barkley, you're going to have Gainwell, Shipley, and I think it's open to somebody else. I think Kendall Milton is a kid to watch out for because I think that this kid, just look at him, his size, I think he's a lot quicker, especially once he gets going. Uh, I think he's a lot faster than people people uh, re realize. His game speed is a lot faster than what his 40 time shows. Uh, the, the tape doesn't look like he's running a 462. So watch out for this kid because I think he's going to make it. And if the Eagles decide not to go out and sign another running back, which let me tell you, I'm open to the idea of bringing in another running back for depth, especially a guy like Dalvin Cook. I think if you had Saquon Barkley and Dalvin Cook backing him up, I think that's a great one-two punch. Then if somehow Miles Sanders gets, if he gets uh, cut by, by the Panthers, bring him back. He, he backed up Barkley in college. Bring him back to Philly. Let him back Barkley up again. Uh, you could do that. But uh, if they don't do that, watch out for this kid, Kendall Milton, because I think he's making this team. Uh, that's just my thought. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful 4th of July. Um, you'll see me on Friday. Uh, I'll be back with another video. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat, remember. It's how we vision, baby. We're all just living in it. So I wanted to talk about this really quick. I forgot to in the video, okay? But the Bleeding Green Nation put out a list of like 25 prop bets, right? With overs and unders. And the one I want to talk about is about Nolan Smith. The prop bet is this. Nolan Smith... Over, under, three and a half sacks. Now, I got to go over, but this pisses me off. Why? Because why is the expectation of Nolan Smith only three and a half sacks? For a first round pick, that's not acceptable. Four and a half sacks is not acceptable. He's a first round pick, okay? Did, over, under should be at least six, six, I would say six sacks. Six, six and a half sacks should be the over-under for Nolan Smith. Why are we expecting so little from Nolan Smith? He's a first-round pick, and he needs to go out there, and he needs to play with it. We don't have time to wait another year, another two years for him to develop. He has to be effective now. We got rid of Hassan Reddick. We can't afford to wait. Three and a half sacks over-under, it better be over six sacks. Six, six, anything... Anything less than six sacks, to me, is a real disappointing year for Nolan Smith. Denzel Washington, out. Hi, Michael Anthony, fitness hit MAF. Oh, folks. The brother screwed us.